Good afternoon, everyone. U.S. Air Force wants to bomb the sky to improve radio reception using a CubeSat satellite blasting off a plasma bomb on 179,000 degrees in our atmosphere to improve the range of radio communications. And also the second best effect is they're going to be able to smooth out the solar winds so our GPS works correctly. Now, it's not the first time they've ever tried to bend the atmosphere for radio communications. You remember hearing about HARP? Well, that's so old school, you can actually rent the facility now. All the while, this little tiny trace gas, three one hundredths of one percent carbon dioxide, we're so worried on the surface here about raising temperatures even one C, yet they're off up there in space blasting off at 179,000 Fahrenheit. But don't worry, we got it covered on the ground here. Raise all the permits to 15,000 US dollars for semi-tractor trailers to deliver your food around the country. No problem, we're going to save the planet by using greenhouse gas emission efficiency requirements. If you hadn't seen the news, the U.S. Air Force is revealing a plan to detonate plasma bombs in Earth's upper atmosphere to improve radio communications using something called the CubeSat. This is going to create radio reflecting plasma, but they're going to use vaporized metal to create a chemical reaction to produce the plasma. Now, these CubeSats are going to be floating around by the tens of thousands up there. And when the military goes into it, they just don't do it once or twice. They experiment thousands of times. And then every time there's radio communications, they're going to be blasting off these CubeSats. They need to boost the atmospheric bounce, bending the ionosphere. Now, a side effect will be able to try to control the solar winds coming in so it won't affect GPS. I guess this is just kind of on-the-job training with our atmosphere because they've never done it before. Don't even know the ramifications or effects. We're so concerned down here with three one hundredths of one percent of a trace gas called carbon dioxide that could possibly raise temperatures, but it hasn't yet. One C, that's a natural variability movement over the last 150 years. Everybody's screaming about one C or two C degree rise, yet they're up in the upper atmosphere blasting off 179,000 degree Fahrenheit devices. And they will do it by the thousands again and again and again. We take a look at the ozone layer. Small amounts had a drastic effect on that ozone hole creation. Now what is this going to do? And the absurdity of it all is that now permitting fees to run a tractor trailer in the United States at least are going to cost 15,000 US dollars a year to adhere to the new greenhouse gas emission fuel efficiency which is just going to drive up our food prices because delivery is involved in every step of the way. Now not to worry though the US Air Force has done this tinkering in the atmosphere and the ionosphere once before using a device called HARP. Now they told us this didn't exist and anybody who was talking about HARP 15 years ago was insane. But here it is, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, which is now so out of date that you can rent it through the University of Alaska if you have the funds and you have the proper experiment. Now that old school system used to just plain heat the ionosphere to try to bend it to do the same thing with the radio wave signals to give them a higher frequency to bounce further actually for submarine communications underwater but the different radio frequency signals travel at different heights and different lengths if you will so they're just trying to cover the globe by exploding plasma to give them a further reach both in depth below water as well as the actual circumference of the earth Going back to HARP, one of the things talked about was using this to create weather patterns, which they said absolutely impossible. We would never do that. That's not even used for that. It can't be done anyway. And yet, here we come. Now it's about weather making, shifting, changing to try to drop rain into the deserts using the exact same array, if you will, of HARP. There's several of those around the planet. Cloud seeding, that's even pre-dinosaur time there. That was so old that they rarely do it any longer. There are a few countries who do it in Asia still. If you're not familiar with plasma, it's not a common state of matter on the Earth, but it's possibly the most common state of matter in the universe. Between planets, it is everywhere. Plasma, we live in a plasma universe. We live in an electric universe. 
and you know plasma, here it is. These are the images. Now, when we come to the K-star out of Korea, this plasma reactor is actually the heat of our sun's surface. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. This is extremely dangerous. No known effects of what's going to happen when this high heat bursts up in the cold ionosphere happen. You know, you can crack a glass if you put it under cold water and then run hot water on it. What's going to happen when you're at minus 200 and then you suddenly slam it with 170,000 Fahrenheit temperatures? There's got to be reactions up there that we just haven't even thought of yet. It just even makes you need to be more prepared because it's just getting so out of control right now. This is mad science at its finest.